Greeting adventurers. Spooky intro, jeez. Welcome back to another episode, installment of whatever this is, the Adventure Squad Creation Saga. You may have noticed my apparel, my Hogwarts cloak with a mighty scar greater than Harry Potter's himself. Well, there is something in front of me right here. That, as I read now. Hello, Mr. Maru. I'm sure you're wondering why it's so bright around. We at the Lumo Shop take pride in illuminating stuff since Indev 2009. We would love for you to sponsor our business with your quest games. We have fully illuminated your entire base 100% spawn proof. Please visit us at our shop location at that these coordinates. See you soon. We do not guarantee 100% spawn proofness. Oh, dang it. I was just about to have to show off my <laughs> monster oops monster spawning checker <laughs> uh, to see if it actually was 100% spawn proof so I could prove you good or prove you wrong let's see how well you guys did uh oh what do we see here there is one singular <laughs> spawnable block uh, those are good okay that's good uh, path blocks are not <gasps> right there. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, I'm such a nitpicker. Let's go to the spawn and see what uh, that's all about. Child of the Moon build slash skin service. The Lumo Shop plus Tri Wizard Tasks. Ooh. Let's go see. The Lumo Shop plus Tri Wizard Tasks. Oh. Oh, this is actually really cool. Rename the wool with your chest name and insert it into the inside chest. Whoa. Welcome to the Lumo Shop. We sell a variety of light sources. Be aware that all sales are final. We do not provide any refunds. Payment can be left inside the barrel where the item was bought. Abbreviations S equals stack, D equals diamond, DB equals diamond block. So according to this book and the rules, I should just be able to put one diamond in here and I've inserted into Ravenclaw. Pretty neat. Let's see here. I think that means I'm the only one in Ravenclaw. So yellow, Azucar is a Hufflepuff. Samurai is a Gryffindor. Snooper and Green are uh, Slytherin. Cool. I'm in a I'm in a uh, class class house of my own. So I just want to go through this welcome guide and read this awesome uh, poem readily. Thing? I don't know. The Sorting Hat. Oh, you may not think I'm pretty, but don't judge on what you see. I'll eat myself if you can find a smarter hat than me. You can keep your bowlers black, your top hat sleek and tall, for I'm the Hogwarts Sorting Hat, and I cap them all. There's nothing hidden in your head that Sorting Hat can't see, so try me on, and I will tell you where you ought to be. You might be long in Gryffindor, where dwell the brave at heart. Their daring nerve and chivalry set the Gryffindor apart. You might be long in Hufflepuff, where they are just and loyal. Those patient Hufflepuffs are true and unafraid of toil. Or yet in wise old Ravenclaw, if you're a ready mind, where those of wit and learning will always find their kind. Or perhaps in Slytherin, where you'll meet your real friends, those cunning folk use any means to achieve their ends. So put me on, don't be afraid, and don't get in a flap. You're in safe hands, though I have none, for I'm a thinking cap. That was cool and fun to read. <laughs> and it looks like I am a Ravenclaw. Our founder, Rowena Ravenclaw, created the Blue and Bronze House, represented by the Eagle. Students in this house possess the traits of cleverness and wisdom, led by Phileas Flitwick and accompanied by the Grey Lady, Helena Ravenclaw. Wow, 32 for one diamond. How do I... Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> it's actually really good prices. I'll have to visit this place often for good stuff. But yeah, so these uh, Tri-Wizard tournaments seem very cool. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. Uh, in the Discord, it shows that this is the Tri-Wizard Cup that you win by... Uh, winning the tournament, which I don't know um, how it's going to work, but I guess that's uh, to come. 
So we'll keep our eyes out on this, and we'll have ourselves a great old time. Designed by uh, Vampire Mochi. Mochi? Something like that. <laughs> Free hugs. We have uh, whatever this is. Let's see here. Uh, 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 warning, door will close on you if you pause. Oh, well, that's just design, I think. All right. Ooh, that's fancy. Skin commissions, three diamonds. So it looks like this is a custom build or a skin commission shop where you can get customized skins for you or customized builds, I guess. <laughs> so this could come in handy in the future. Uh, I'll just have to see. But I do like this, uh, this entrance way. It's very cool. I like the, the dark abyss in the back. It's very ominous. It's a good job. Nice job. And on the other side, conc welcome to concrete thinking. Whoa. That's interesting. Giant by a vampire again. Nice. One concrete powder. One diamond for 64. So it looks like this is made by the same person and did an excellent job again. These are great shops. Very impressed. Uh, oh, did I just wreck something? I think we're good. I think this might just be a uh, <laughs> uh, employees only area. Probably shouldn't be back here. All right, so uh, again, concrete. So this could be a uh, very coming handy. We'll just have to see. I noticed a lot of you aren't subscribed, so would you consider subscribing? All right, so now that we're done at the shopping district, let's carry on with the Harry Potter theme. And from last episode, if you remember, we made a minecart line going along here that leads us from spawn to our middle island that uh, has a bridge going right to our kingdom. So uh, I asked last episode if anyone had any ideas for a note block song that we could play while riding this minecart line. And I got one suggestion and it was Hedwig's theme from Harry Potter and I love that idea. I love it. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a beacon place it down over here and then we can start by creating a little area for us to work with all right so what I've done is I've just taken the redstone line from right below where the detector rail is and it goes along here follows this line down below to here where I'm going to put dirt and no blocks I'm gonna tune them to be the song that I need and I'm just gonna snake it along all the way across to the other side and I think I might have to copy it going this way so that the song plays both ways properly I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to put all of the note blocks in the middle and you'd be able to hear it on both sides but it's uh, too far so uh, I'll just get right to work and we'll see where we go so I just want to show off what progress I've been making and how I've been doing it, and that is I've looked at the Minecraft wiki on note blocks and looked at this picture that shows each of the keys on the note blocks and how many times I have to right click it. I'm able to see how many times or which note it is based on right here. It shows me the note on this one here is 10, which is an E key, and this one is 17, which is a B key. And the way I know which keys each of them are is by looking at a YouTube video of someone playing the song on like on a, an actual keyboard and it shows which notes they're playing. And I just have to guess the timing for it basically. So I also have this big gap in here that makes it so that this goes along faster because the minecart travels faster than the note blocks go. So I just want to have a little test run and see how it sounds. Oh my goodness me. And here we go. Let's try her out. Nice. That's as far as I've gotten so far. Uh, there's still a bit more that I want to do. Looks like I'm only halfway down the track as it finishes. And I'm going to copy the note blocks going the other way. So you can hear the song going both directions, which is going to be very cool, I think. Our radio, I think the first side is complete, so let's give her a test run. So 
So I just realized that there's gonna be a minecart going both ways. So I actually need to change it from going from the detector rail to going to the button press instead, and that should fix the issue. All right, so now I just need to copy it to the other side and we'll be good to go. And with that completed, we can now check another thing off of our do to list, which is note block rail. And we can find out what to work on next. So I think I'm going to go to make creeps TNT launcher things. Let's go check it out. All right, so here we are at the new project location. I have decided to change my skin to my proper house colors of Ravenclaw being blue and bronze. And we have uh, some work to do for creep. This is a design that we we're trying to make work. We we're having a lot of troubles with it. It is a TNT flying machine that, as you can see, creates a giant crevice with one TNT. So we have to copy this design all the way across because this is going to be a giant hole going all the way down to bedrock. And I'll show you some footage that I captured of us messing around with it. Okay. I'm, I'm <gasps> it's doing it! Did I, I think I did it! It's doing it! Check this out. Toby, Toby, Toby. <laughs> Gotta make sure it goes back and forth though. No, it just killed itself. Okay. So that's my issue. You know what I think, Creep? I think you're a gosh darn genius. Alright, so what you just saw was just trying to mess around to try and figure this thing out because it's actually pretty convoluted. The way it works is every time an observer is updated, it sends out a signal which actually powers this piston, which would drag it all along and just snakes over and over again. So, as you can see here, it just goes. <laughs> On this next design, we have an extra observer with a piston down here, so it pushes it along. And you can see here that every time it gets pushed, it pushes it out of the way. But we're having a lot of troubles where we didn't know that this had to be here. So when the flying machine would go all the way across it would push it out and then when it was being retracted it pulled away before it could pull it in so it just left it here which was a big issue so in order to combat that we simply put an obsidian that held it back you can see that it, it's unable to fire this one here because it's in the way so when it pulls back by breaking this one it will Put it pulled away, and then it'll bring it with it. So it just keeps on doing it over and over again. The next issue <laughs> in lies where if you try and just build it, it just kind of ruins it, and you can't place the TNT. So in order to combat that, you have to build it offset where when the flying machine gets pushed across, it like engulfs it and pushes the powered detector rail over top of it and for some reason it doesn't realize that it's being powered so it just kind of doesn't work all right so when it gets uh pushed across it like engulfs it and then it just works <laughs> so this tnt actually is being powered by this detector rail right now but it just doesn't realize it and then somehow it has to do with this i don't really know and this uh, cobblestone wall is just holding the minecart in place, I think. <laughs> First thing I need to do is test and see if I can actually use these with honey blocks. And I cannot place rails on these, so this will not work. So we don't have enough slime blocks to make all these machines yet. So what we need to do is go to the shopping district and see if anyone is selling any. Aha! We have arrived. So let's take a look at all the shops available and see if there are any slime blocks on offer. Yes, I'd like to purchase a, like a few stacks of slime blocks, please. Can you hook me up? I would greatly appreciate it. No, no, no. I need slime. I know you have it. You're holding out on me. Ah! 
So I only found one slime vendor in the whole shopping district and he was being really stingy with me. So I know that Core was being a slime farm, so looks like I'm going to have to go to Core's base. If you remember, we did a secret door that was right down there. But that's not the goal of our mission today. I believe he has a slime farm over in the ocean somewhere. All right, I couldn't find the entranceway, but I think there's another way into it going down this cave. Aha, I found it. Should be right down here. I'm trapped. So how do I get into here? Finally found the place. Oh, no, that's a crafting table. Aha, right here. Well, this doesn't help me. That's only 25. <laughs> Uh-oh. So without slime blocks, we're going to be incapable of making the TNT machines for now. We're going to have to ask for people on the server to sell us some slime if they have it, hopefully. <laughs> Last night, Creep was trying to do a quest for the advancement great view from up here where you have to levitate 50 blocks from an attacks of a shulker. And he challenged me during that. My turn. Oh, you dead. I got 166. Come on. Cre <gasps> Oh. <laughs> oh, I got 166, OB. No! No! <laughs> Gonna lose my mind! Losing my freaking mind. You got this, though. Zobi, you know that your point system sucks, right? Love you, too. The, the quest that you claim to be the, like 30 points to 70 points or whatever are super hardcore. Are they? And deserve more. Yeah, have you tried to get a blaze into the freaking uh, nether or overworld? No. Try it. Do you personally challenge me? I personally challenge you, Sobi, oh, to no. get a freaking blaze. Get Get a blaze into my base. Into your base? Into my base. Right next to right next to Hot Rod. Get get a blaze. Right next to Hot Rod. Oh my gosh. Okay. I need concentration. So wait, creep. You need total focus, right? Yeah. At the Battle of Gettysburg during the American Civil War, a small group of Union soldiers had run out of ammo against a large group of the Confederate Army. In a panic, the Union soldiers sprinted at them, screaming, with only bayonets drawn. The entire Confederate Army that was present turned and ran away in fear, not knowing that they had literally no ammunition. So be... <laughs> uh, Shulker, or what? Yeah, levitate up to 50 blocks. I already had the advancement. What? Well, and you're good. 65. <laughs> I did Got it. it. Hey. Now I'm not one to back down from a challenge, so let's go and do it. In order to do this, we're going to need powered rails and regular rails. Now we can head to Creeps and do our duty. So here we are at Creeps' place, along with Hot Rod, his blaze, where he challenged us. So uh, we're going to prove he's a big old whiny baby. We have everything we need. Oh, we also need uh, potions. All right, so if we go up here, we can prove how big of a whiny little baby he is. Don't hate me, creep. You're good. You're good. We can see that he's already inside of another fortress, making this the easiest challenge you've ever seen your whole life. <laughs> All we have to do is find a blaze. Oh, there's one right there. So let's start by just drinking a uh, good old fire resistance and invisibility. There we go. Oh, we got out. How do you do that? What? I didn't know you could do that. Oh, 
don't know where my bow went. I'll just have to use this. Oh, wait. Before he despawns, I should probably name him. There we go. Told you so. There you go, boy. He's easiest challenge ever. There he goes. Let's get him through. Clean up my mess. Oh. That's sad. Let's see our handiwork. Uh oh, this might be problematic. Oh, no, it's good. Okay. Block him in nicely, and now you can see, not a problem at all. I don't know what you're whinging about. <laughs> Oh, I'm so mean to you. I'm sorry. So now after that long-winded showing off of my abilities to destroy Creep and whatever he does, we have now taken him back at our kingdom of Septipend again, where the moon rises. Yeah, rises. I right, so I want to show off a little bit of what I've done. I've done more work on the outside of my kingdom here on the college, and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. This looks pretty interesting. Definitely, um something to look at a spectacle of the eye and I copied it over here a little bit and I've added a light switch for the creeper farm so I just I couldn't think of anything like that would be good so I just took out the carpet that was here there was carpets in that spot to prevent spiders from spawning and just broke a hole that went all that goes all the way down so uh, that actually lights it up completely and I don't lose any spawning spaces when the lava is gone and it's dark, we don't lose any spawning spaces. And the creepers just walk right around it. So it works out pretty good. And I'm going to have to figure out something to do to make this look nicer. If you guys have any suggestions, that would be greatly appreciated. Looks like the fourth part of the mission is going to be in the next video. Not this one, unfortunately. But that's uh, something that I'm excited for. It's going to be cool. Just, wait, just you wait. Keep, uh, keep your eye out for the next video. And aside from that, that's pretty much it for this video. So... If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, and if you have any ideas, resonant projects, or prank ideas, definitely leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear them and see what you guys are thinking, and tell me what you guys think of what I've done, and any improvements you might suggest for future videos. I'm always trying to improve. And uh, thanks for watching, so cheerio!